you join us back in Bristol. We've been parked up at Clifton Park for the last few days, just enjoying Bristol really. It is very, very windy. They say that you should do something every day that scares you. So here goes. <laughs> We are about to walk across that behind me in the middle of Storm Isler, 70 mile an hour winds. We must be absolutely mental. Reese hates heights, I hate bridges. This should be fun. So this that we're about to walk across is called the Clifton Suspension Bridge. It's 245 feet high and it connects Clifton to right Bristol. There, Daisy. So to put this into perspective, I don't even like going up a ladder. I'm absolutely petrified of heights. And Emma don't even like them little bridges that you go over in the in the car or the van. Last time we did a bridge, we were at King Arthur's Castle in Tintagel. Oh, it were awful. It were awful. And this is even windier, so this hat's going to have to come off. What are you doing? Are you zipping your hat inside your Putting coat? Putting my hat inside my coat. <laughs> I don't want to lose my hat. Right. We're ready. Here we go. The last one uh, at Tintagel were only 180 feet. This is 245, so oh. we're going... <laughs> We're going up in the world. You have to tell me. A guy called Brunel actually entered a competition um, to be able to design and build this bridge. Um, and it took 33 years for it to build, to build it. And he actually died before it was completed. So the completion was done in his memorial. The anchors for this bridge go 20 meters underground. So I'm hoping that's secure enough while I'm crossing it. Just about to cross it now. I'm gonna put you over the edge and show you this. This is really, really high. Oh, it's proper windy, isn't it? It's really windy. How windy is it going across there? Is it really bad? Oh, oh. oh you can feel the wind moving you. Oh. Hang on, I need to keep holding my hat here. I'm gonna lose my hat. I don't know if you can see down there. Look how tiny those cars are. Look at that, you can stand down the edge outside the cliff. Can you see there in cliff? Oh yeah. How do you get there? I don't we know. We need to get there. I don't need to get there. I feel really dizzy, really light-headed, really light-headed. <laughs> You're doing really well though, Flower. For anybody that's got a fear, you'll know that sometimes it's like a bit, you know, the people think it's a bit irrational, but when you've got a fear, whether that be of spiders or whatever heights, it's extremely real, isn't it? And it's, it's, um, you're doing really well, Chick. I, I think didn't. I, I'm okay with my heights because there's quite a high barrier up, but for Emma, it, it doesn't matter whether there's a barrier, it's a bridge, she absolutely hates them, she's petrified of them. I've never been one of those thrill seekers. I've never been one of them people that enjoys getting on roller coasters and feeling exhilaration. I just, it's the same with exercise. I've never been into that neither. I don't understand this like thing you're meant to get from being exhilarated by something. So we have made it guys to the other side, safe and sound. Well done, Emma. Everybody give a thumbs up for Emma. <laughs> what an achievement. Well done, sweetheart. Oh. Let me touch something solid. Oh. <laughs> You've done really well there. You've done really, really well I there. feel so dizzy. I feel really, really dizzy. Oh. Oh. You've got to walk back. Yeah, I know. Look at that for a piece of construction though. Shall we go back? You see, on one hand, you're reassured by the fact it was built in the 1800s. On the other hand, you think the design was in the 1800s. And somebody entered a competition, a competition to win the design of it. That's not reassuring, is it? It's just really not. Let's just get back across and I've done with it, please. Ooh. 
can't see, but I can't wear my hat because my oh, hat will blow. a really it. stupid idea, this. <sighs> so, uh, goodness knows what I look like now. It's not an Instagram shot, is it? This is Isambard Kingdom Brunel. The bridge didn't get finished till five years after the guy died. That's unfortunate, isn't it? That's really sad. He never got to see it finished. You weren't bothered, were you, about that in your little backpack? Just got to do things. If you don't do things, you don't live, do you? So that were good, but now we're going to show you something even more epic. This one I'm excited for. So if you're new here, we are Reese and Emma and together with our little dog Daisy we travel all across the UK and Europe I'm aboard the absolute madness crazy train that is our lives. So we were also in Bristol in the last episode but there was that much to see in this city we had to just take it over two vlogs. It's that epic here. I reckon that it's the coolest city in Britain and it absolutely is. come down to have a look at Brunel's SS Great Britain which is the massive massive ship um, that he designed himself and I noticed and I thought I'm sure that bridge were built by Brunel so we've just been talking to one of the local sort of tour guides here full of knowledge absolutely amazing um, and he was talking us through sort of Brunel's life and he's a, he's a really interesting guy he entered a competition to be able to build the bridge um, which the competition that he won was just for it to be a suspension bridge in terms of the design of it and everything else he actually had very little to do with it and it was actually a woman that designed it he also designed um, the Great British Western Railway which is a massive part of the railway infrastructure that we've still got today and apparently he was involved in about 75 different projects he used to work sort of 18 20 hours a day and although he he kind of was involved in all of this and obviously a lot of money involved in all of that. Brunel did not do things for money. He did it for the love of, um, you know, just being a part of something. Um, he wanted to be the best of the best all the time, be admired by people. Here at the famous SS Great Britain, Emma stayed outside with Daisy because the, there's no dogs allowed here and the tickets are quite expensive, but it is absolutely worth it if you're coming on a visit to Bristol. The ship is absolutely magnificent and we're going to go explore it now. The ship first set sail in July 1843 to crowds cheering it as it sailed on its first voyage. Can you imagine that? This, I can't explain to you the grandeur of this thing. This is my first time ever on a proper ship. This is a Victorian ship and it's just, I can't even explain it. I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to kind of show you as we go around. So up on front on deck where first class passengers only were allowed, you could see the ship's wheel right up at the front. This is going down to the lower deck. The shape, oh, this is cool, isn't it? Oh, it's like a museum. It's like um, the reenacting uh, the scenes on the ship. Let's see what's the rear. Goes lower down. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely insane. Oh, look at the size of these little beds. The grandeur of this place is just absolutely incredible. There's these little rooms going off like everywhere. You can go lower down to this uh, lower deck by the looks of it. It's just, I'm gonna get lost here. Wow. So, I have absolutely no idea where I am now. We seem to have come down into the barrels of the ship or something maybe. I don't know, you can explore this entire place. That's what's cool about it. 
is you can explore like everything, every door's open. There's absolutely no way I'm gonna get back out of here. I don't even know where I am. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be here. It's kind of difficult to kind of vlog, um, to kind of give you the, the real sense of kind of what this feels like. Um, it feels real is what it feels like, but it's definitely one of those places where you'd need to come and experience the sounds, the creaking floorboards, the smells. It's, um, I've never been to anything like this, ever. It's, it's amazing. I just wish Emma could have seen this. Well, we've managed to get out of there. Um, and I'm not quite sure where, where we go next. These guys keep scaring the life out of me, look at him. They're everywhere, these like little, um, what do you call them, mannequins. Talk about a place to explore. So I don't even know what to kind of tell you where we are in the ship or anything. I guess just to um, give you my experience of uh, what I'm seeing and experiencing down here. It's absolutely done to perfection. Like even the floorboards creak. You can imagine kind of living down here in the Victorian times, but the beds are so tiny. Right, we're gonna go back through this way. They've given me a map and now I can see why. Let me show you this. So look, like even the drawings are kind of cool. There was a hat there. Look at that, I might get myself a bowler at. It's like being in a horror show, this, I swear to God. Everywhere you turn, there's a mannequin. I'm definitely in what would have been the kitchen. Look at this guy. <laughs> there's a rat. This is literally like stepping back in time. I guess we're into like the mechanics of, uh, of the engine now, of how the ship would have uh, worked. So it looks like you can go down again. Hello. Ah, okay, I've just accidentally stumbled on the way out. Wow, I hope that just gave you a little bit of a kind of glimpse into what this place is and how cool this ship is to visit. If ever you come to Bristol, this is just the definitely get this at the top of your list. Very difficult to vlog how good it is. Um, just a network of rooms that are done so much to perfection of how it would have been in Victorian times. I've never seen anything quite like it where you can experience history like that. There's even a little section where you can kind of go underneath and see the dry dock where, there's, where they would have worked on the underneath of the ship, presumably. That was the Great Britain ship that you can visit in Bristol. Highly, highly recommended. Let's go back to Emma, see where she is. About £20 to get in there, which I guess is a lot of money, but your ticket actually allows you to come back. Um, again, it's like a yearly ticket, which for a lot of these things, you kind of never come back, do you? It says you can come back as many times as you want, but you never go back. But that is definitely something I would actually return to. So in that sense, if you want to come back again, it's like a ten at a time, so it kind of it kind of works out. I think we're parked down here somewhere. If you are enjoying this content, guys, please just take a few seconds to subscribe. Um, it just means that you won't miss an episode. So when we put an episode out, if you hit the little notification bell, it just lets you know when we put an episode out. But it really helps the channel out as well. It helps us to grow and kind of um, kind of get our message out to people, I guess, of uh, living free, living van life doing what you love to do and um, living each day to the fullest while you can. Here we are. 
I've found the van. I presume she's come back to the van. Let's have a look. Hello, Daisy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you enjoy it? It was absolutely fantastic. I was just saying to everybody, like, that return ticket, most of the time you don't go back to them, do you? But that is definitely something I'd go back to. Well, they're amazing. you can use it between people, I think it's quite good as well. Well, welcome to our van if you haven't seen it before. <laughs> We're just uh, having a little bit of lunch. Kettle's boiled to Gretel. Go on, Gretel. Gretel so, I've been here keeping house, keeping the home warm for you when you get back. Oh. Missed out on looking at all that nice stuff. Wait till you see the footage. It were more the smells and the sounds, and there were these mannequins that were just like scaring me. And <laughs> if you don't know already, um, and it's news to you, um, we actually own a canal boat that would turn them into a pirate ship. So it was kind of good to get some ideas of. I know that one pirate, that was Victorian, but the way they've kind of done it and replicated it were kind of good for our boat as well. Um, keep posted for that. We're going to be sailing down the seven canals in that soon. What is matter with you? What is the matter with you? Are you saying hello? Say hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. You've missed him, haven't you? You're never away from us, are you? You've missed it, uh, yeah? Have you missed me? Oh, dear. <laughs> So we've got something really cool and exciting planned for tonight, which we're going to show you. And we're also going to show you where we park in the centre of Bristol, where we sleep in the van. Um, if you've seen the last episode, you'll have seen that we've kind of been sleeping on the outskirts. But tonight, um, we're going to try and sleep in the centre of Bristol sort of city centre. But we're going to show you that. But before we do that, Bristol has got over 150 thrift and second-hand shops. So we're going to go shopping. We're going to go check them out and just kind of go exploring those thrift and second-hand shops. All the clothes we wear are second hand, we never ever buy new. So let's go there first. He won't stick down again, will he? <laughs> <laughs> Rodney won't stick, look. <laughs> arrived at the park up um, the storm is now really kicking off um, so we've just been kind of getting everything sorted so we've not been able to kind of show you where we've parked we're going to show you that in the morning because it is actually dark now um, so we are now heading um, we've actually just parked for now at, um, at the Meridian Studios where we're going so this is the second part of my Christmas present um, and it's actually a live show a hand pan live show so we're going to go there now and check that out hopefully we'll be able to film inside there so we can show you um, so we're going to go there now. the most amazing amazing experience i know it were bought for reese for christmas but honestly i think i've enjoyed it just as much and daisy's experienced her first ever hand pan concert i know you really enjoyed it didn't you <laughs> yeah she was like hypnotized all the way through it just asleep in a pram everybody giving her loads of attention it's just incredible i couldn't have asked for a better christmas oh. present it was just i've always wanted a hand pan for years and years and years and just can't afford one they're really expensive instruments quite a new model modern instrument they haven't been around very long but um they're just really expensive so that were definitely the next best thing to be able to go and have a live concert and i got to try one out a little bit if you saw last week's episode you'll have seen that i also um went for for a lesson that were kind of part of the christmas present experience that emma got me so um yeah so this the, tonight was just fantastic really really enjoyed it best and the worst bit <laughs> were that there were actually a raffle 
Um, so as part of you getting your tickets, you got five raffle tickets each when you got there to enter a competition for you to be able to win a hand pan. And obviously the concert was a really sort of small, intimate concert, maybe I don't know, 100 people max, max. It was, one, it was a really small concert. Um, and so you're thinking, well, you know, I've got a pretty good chance here, you know. Um, and then unfortunately... You, you couldn't have written it. I, I was sat there and thinking, please, like all the good vibes, let Reese win this, let him win this. Um, because Reese has been saving up to be able to get a hand pan. And every time he gets in a cold water swim, um, he puts a pound in the jar to be able to save up. So he's still got quite a few hundred cold water swims to go before he can afford one. So I thought, please let him win it. And literally the couple behind us could not believe it. They won, they won not, there were three prizes. One were a hand pan and then two two of these like bag of goodies basically um and the couple actually won two of the prizes that won the hand pan and one of the bags and mm. i could not believe it they were sat literally right behind us but you, you've got to be happy for people aren't you so i'm sure they needed it way more than we do but um yeah we're well, a bit gutted for him yeah it's um you've got to be pleased for the people but i must admit i was gutted because i like if ever i'm gonna get one um there's, there's no secret to it. They're basically like they're about a th over a thousand pound of these instruments, so that's gonna be what, like, it's gonna be like a thousand cold swims. It's gonna take me three years <laughs> of cold swimming every day to be able to afford one of these hand pans. We don't have a lot of money, so like Emma said, if ever there were a chance to get one for a fiver, <laughs> that were it. But never mind, I, I enjoyed it anyway, with the experience of going there, you know, and-, and I'll put you a GoFundMe page Yeah, out there, GoFundMe. <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put YouTube supers on to fund it or something. Um, but no, it were, it were, the whole experience was just absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, it was the, the next best thing, I guess, so great. First things first, you can get my coffee made though. Yeah. <laughs> Gretel, the kettle's just finished boiling. Can you believe that? I can't find a little spoon anywhere. Well, we're going to have to use a big spoon for coffee. Is there not one at the sink? Oh, yeah, there is. <laughs> have to wash up. Um, there were that guy, though, weren't there, as well, that no. played the org. I mean, everybody was picking up a different instrument, weren't there, literally? Oh, yeah, the talent is just absolutely incredible. So one guy... It started on an organ, and that's really interesting, actually, because he travels with his organ in his van, in his camper van. So he wheels the organ into into the back of his camper van and then goes off wherever, busking or whatever. Um, so we are a really interesting guy. I think he's called Movement of Music or something on YouTube. Check him out. Um, but, um, yeah, just a really interesting guy, but very talented because he were like... He were, it started on his organ and then jumped onto the saxophone and then at one point he was sat on the floor with a did didgeridoo. And then I think he picked up a guitar, just like multi-talented, like seriously clever musician. Um, so he, he were he were really cool. They were all really cool, all very talented people. Um, it's taken me five years to learn how to play three songs on flute. So I don't know how people do it, but some people have just got a gift for it, haven't they, I guess? In the morning, we'll show you where we've parked up in the centre of Bristol. A lot of people panic about parking in cities, and generally it is quite difficult. But I have to say, Bristol is surprisingly easy. Um, surprisingly easy. We were going to film it earlier, but unfortunately with the storm, we just we just couldn't get out. It was just really, really bad. You know, the winds have been going up above 50 miles an hour. Um, it's just been really, really bad storm. Right, two cups of coffee. Oh, I haven't even stirred him. I haven't even stirred them. I'm trying to get the shot. And You're I doing that for job. It. Look, <laughs> more interesting in getting the shot. Look at that. Look at that for a bit of uh, cinematography. No sound effects added there. That were real. There you go. Don't burn your hands. Daisy, you can't have coffee, can you? She's loved it tonight because she has got so much attention and there were another dog there as well. So every time anybody came up and gave Daisy attention because she were in a pushchair, the other dog even walked towards that person. Daisy were going mad, like, don't you dare give anybody else attention when you're stroking me. You're such a diva, aren't you, Daisy? Daisy, do you want some water? I'll get you some water. I'm telling you, she's going to look at you like you're absolute rubbish she's when you thirsty. give her that. That's not what she wants. She wants food. Let's see. She's going to be the size of her house. Would you like some water? Yeah. 
Oh, she does. See? <laughs> she didn't wag her tail at it, though, did she? she you did a new, tail. didn't you? I knew you wanted some water. I think we need to get some tea, don't we? We haven't actually eaten yeah, yet, Yeah, what we? do you fancy? Apart from a couple of samosas there, and that's about it. It's quite late now, so I'm not right. You sort of go past it, don't you, where you, you don't want, you know, you don't want to eat a big meal, really. Is that nice, Daisy? Oh. oh she's thirsty, isn't she? She's like Oliver. She's literally drunk Oliver all Twist. That. That's not left. Please, sir, can I have some more? You get you some more? Yeah. We stayed um, here last night in an industrial estate. It's a really, really big industrial estate. There's no restrictions on the night time. You do have to arrive late um, and leave early because obviously in the morning, you'd be respectful. It's filled with people coming to work and needing somewhere to park. But there are actually quite a lot of um, what appear to be resident vans around here as well. There's loads of caravans um, that clearly are permanent. They've even got tables and chairs set up outside and everything. But there's quite a lot of camper vans and stuff around here as well. So it seems quite accepting that, you know, nobody seems to have an issue with it it's just a case of getting up really early and setting off really early i'm gonna get some uh, breakfast on now before we do actually set off and leave bristol um just have a bite to eat I'm trying to toast bread i bought that toaster thing that you can put on cooker but it's just more hassle than it's worth when you're trying to do a baguette it's easy to just burn your fingers and hold it over a flame <laughs> So we're going to do some scrambled eggs, have a little bite to eat, and then we're going to get moving, aren't we? Um, but we've really enjoyed it, really, really enjoyed it. Met some lovely people, as we do everywhere we go, every single time we go anywhere. We always meet lovely people. And it's changed my opinion, to be honest, of... Um, I'd not say cities in general, because I think it's quite unique is Bristol, but it has, uh, it has kind of changed my opinion of what I thought Bristol was. It's not what I thought it was at all. There's such a wide range of things to do. There's something for everybody. There's places of tranquility. There's places where it's really sort of busy and bustling. There's, you know, markets. There's vintage stuff. There's, oh, there's just everything. The artwork is phenomenal. Um, you know, so, it's, yeah, there's something for everybody. And it's not that difficult to park. Um, there are places that you can park, especially if you're willing to go um, sort of where we went on last week's um, vlog and just go a little bit out of the centre. It's been a real experience and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, Bristol's just been absolutely epic. What a city, what an amazing place. I'm really, really going to miss it. If you didn't catch last week's vlog where we started off in Bristol, I'll stick that on the screen there. Um, and until next time, guys, keep writing your own story. <laughs>